Hello and welcome. I am on holiday here in India and I have a guest with more than 30 years experience living in the Jammu, Kashmir, Ladakh region. So I thought it would be good to interview him. In a longer video, we cover his impressions, problems in the region and possible solutions. This video is a shorter video or summary for people to watch, maybe hopefully first. So, like I always mention, Jammu Kashmir is a vast area. It can be easily divided into three big parts. First is the Jammu region, the second is the Srinagar Valley and third is Ladakh. Jammu Kashmir cannot be all three termed in one go. Ladakh is the one region which is a region of vastness with very low population density and does not support tourism at all. The Jammu region is the second region where tourism is there but it is only 10 to 15 percent of what is tourism present in Jammu and Kashmir. The main tourism is in the valley. In the valley also there are about 15 to 20 districts or even more number of districts but the tourism is confined to a few main districts only. Main of them are Baramula, next to Baramula is Shopur and Shupiam. These are three notorious districts where we can say almost 70 to 80 percent population supports terrorism either in some form or the other. There are other districts where also terrorism exists, the Srinagar downtown, the Batmalu, the Anantanag, the Gandharwal, the Kazikun, but terrorism here is not that much. So we cannot say that the entire JNK is faced with terrorism. Now coming to the terrorism itself, why terrorism? Terrorism, the main root cause for terrorists to take up arms is not a religion. Religion is one of the cause, it accounts for 15 to 20 percent of local population who are motivated or brainwashed by the Kashmiris. But the main reason for people to assist terrorism or let the terrorism thrive is because of poverty. If the region was not so much poor, it would have been all the more better. Over a successive period of time, right from 1970 uh, or 1947 and beyond, the population increased 60 times, but the means of livelihood remained the same. The government has spent so much of money, almost 18% of its GDP goes on Jammu and Kashmir. And successive governments over a period of 50-70 years have spent so much of money but nothing has reached the common man. So what do we do? How do we solve this problem? I have a few solutions to suggest. The first and foremost problem is education. If we improve the conditions of education, if we empower the population of the valley or so-called Jammu and Kashmir, then half the problem is solved because the population will be curtailed and we can give education in all sorts of forms in English, in Hindi and the local language and this particular advancement will go a long way in solving the problems of Jammu and Kashmir. The second problem that is addressed is the corruption. If you see police is corrupt, forest department is corrupt, PW is corrupt, one rupee which is sent to Jammu and Kashmir, not even five paisa reaches the local population. There is poverty, there is lack of electricity, there is lack of infrastructure, there is lack of roads. People remain poor as such. So what do we do? Article 370 is gone. With Article 370 gone, now what we need to do is make all the citizens accountable by a biometric Aadhaar card so that they are able to identify themselves and subsequently also ensure that each citizen of Srinagar of the valley of Jammu and Kashmir has a bank account so that the direct subsidy scheme can be given to them. Also we need to strengthen the local body, the so called village Nambardar who is the elected member like we have the panchayas in another stage, he can be elected and he can be made accountable to the village. So whatever subsidy that we wish to give to the state of Jammu and Kashmir that should be distributed down to the village level and the amount can be told to the local Nambardar who will be accountable for those people. 
when a small size of population say 1000 or 5000 people are now holding the numbers are accountable the chances of corruption will be very very less also we need to ensure that besides kashmir the kashmiris also belong to us how do we ensure that we ensure that kashmiris are given a chance like the pilgrimages which are sent to other parts of countries the char dham yatra we now start free buses free accommodation and free tours for those poor people those uneducated people of jammu and kashmir who will go and see india and then they'll feel proud citizens of india the industries the businesses the food pack uh, packaging industries all this the carpet industry they all need to be revived in jammu and kashmir the tourism industry needs to be revived entrepreneurs from other states who wish to now invest in jammu and kashmir should be able to do that and they should be given a subsidy and incentives all these people i hear in the other parts of the country other than jnk say that kashmir belongs to them kashmir hamara hai they say with a thumping word fine kashmir is yours but what about the kashmiris so if you really want to be a nationalist if you really want to call yourself a elected member a mp or a mla my suggestion is that suggest to these people to employ at least two people in their offices according to merit i am not saying that you compromise with the merit according to their merit in whatever post that you want adopt two to three people from kashmir and give them education empower them and let them feel that they are indians if india feels that jammu kashmir belongs to them kashmiris feel india belongs to them the day is not very far when kashmir will thrive like any other state and will be better and then let the people across the border pakistan who so vehemently say jammu and kashmir has not progressed let them come and see and i'm sure the government will be magnanimous enough to show them how the jammu and kashmir has progressed not only this the pakistanis may also think of inviting a delegation from india to go and suggest to azad kashmir as to what they should do to improve conditions of people there and also so also in baluchistan this is my advice to all the people we should be more concerned of improving the conditions of people of jammu and kashmir rather than addressing short term measures to counter terrorism thank you very much for your suggestions i'm sure they are very helpful they are certainly very interesting to me and i hope that in listening to what you have to say that people will have hope for this region to improve greatly for the benefit of india thank you for your time thank you thank you to my audience for listening i hope you all have a good day thank you goodbye